I was asked recently how I make money as a video creator and VFX artist aside from YouTube. I do everything from music videos to weddings to business promotion, but I recently got a text from a guy who I met about four and a half years ago in a mentorship group, and he's asking me to do my favorite kind of work, which is complete creative control VFX work Love it. He sent me two reference images, one of a football player with his hand up and the second was from Dragon Ball Z and had an energy blast and he's asking if it's possible to recreate. And this immediately got me excited because I used to be a huge fan of Dragon Ball Z when I was a kid. I mean, I couldn't think of anything more fun to do and my younger version would be so stoked at what I've done with my life. I honestly can't believe I get paid to do this. So of course I said yes. So the first order of business for me is to screen record off of YouTube what an energy blast exactly looks like and continue to refer back to that as I'm editing mine. So now when I say yes to these types of jobs, I let them know that I need to see the footage because I need to know what I'm working with. Oftentimes when you're working with directors who aren't VFX artists themselves, they can be a little disconnected from what the VFX process actually is and there can be a huge difference in how long the same effect can take based on the footage presented. Now the great thing about Scope, the director, his handle's right here in case you want to check out of stuff for yourself but he always comes through with the cleanest stuff which I'm pumped on and if he doesn't know how he should shoot something for a specific effect that he's going for he will contact me to be that VFX coordinator supervisor on that and I'll send him a either voice message or a long text explaining everything that needs to be done so that it is a speedy process because if the shots bad the effects not going to be great or it will require a ton of extra time and sometimes the budget just isn't there for that amount of work but luckily once again this shot looks great and it's time to download it and get to work I opened up the shot in after effects and the first order of business is to create a new solid that way we can add turbulent noise to it I changed the fractal type to strings the noise type to spline and then adjusted the bright Brightness and contrast so that there was a lot of white. I then scaled up the turbulent noise and then keyframed the evolution so that it would pulsate. After that I added the tint effect to it and changed the matte black to a saturated pink color. I then added CC lens effect to change that layer into a bubbly look. Then I lowered the size of the CC lens and then repositioned that layer to be above the subject's hands. And now it's time to motion track for the position of the hand and we don't need to worry about tracking for the rotation or the scale because it's a perfect circle and you wouldn't really notice it rotating anyway since it's pulsating and the scale doesn't change because the camera is not moving towards or away from the subject. I then applied that tracking data to a null object and then parented our energy blast layer to that null object. I then keyframed the tint to go from completely colorless to that pink that we set because in our reference the energy blast starts as colorless and clear. Then I keyframed the size of the CC lens effect and the position of the energy blast because again if we refer back to that reference if that ball didn't move at all it would completely envelop the subject so we have to have it move up as it's growing. I then keyframe the opacity and the mask expansion in the beginning of the effect so that the ball appears in about two frames and grows as well. After that, I added a glow to the ball and then I created a new light pink solid so that we can start to fake some of the light coming off of this ball to interact with the immediate surroundings. I then track the position and the rotation of the background so that when we add all these light passes in, it's tracked in properly. I again added that tracking data to a null object and then parented our light pass to that null object so they would be tracked in. I then went and added a couple more light passes to anywhere that needed it like the arm or the face and then I also added a white flash when the ball first appears and then more light passes on the ground to really sell this effect. Now again you're parenting all these light passes to that tracking data of the background and then I was making sure that all these light passes kind of fade out as it gets further and further away from the energy blast. And then that's it. That's how I recreated an energy blast from Dragon Ball Z and got paid for it and loved every freaking minute of it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something. If you did, leave me a thumbs up, comment what you thought down below, and then don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one.